So, welcome to the first session after lunch, making the transition to Microsoft Edge Chromium. Um, just um, type any questions in the window if you have them, I will try to answer them later. I've wrote, written my own Q&A in the end where I ask the questions to myself. I think that's more effective, uh, so I will go through that as well in the end. So, um, yeah, about me, you saw that before. Um, I'm on Twitter, just ping me if you have any questions afterwards, email me. Um, so why Chromium then? Well, today the, the real world is that I think I saw some um, numbers actually that like it's like 80% of all users worldwide prov pro uses Chrome in some uh, way instead of Edge. So, so Google Chrome is by far the biggest browser there is. Um, and 60% of all organizations need more than one browser today. Either it's depending on I-11, it depends on uh, limitations in Edge, and we have Chrome. So there's a lot of different, and it's it's expensive to support all these uh, this different browsers and tweak them as well. Um, Chromium is uh, open source. You can read more about it here. It's multi-platform and it's, it's it's compatible, right? Basically, it's setting the standard right now. So so if it works with Chrome, then it's then it's compatible. That's a good thing, right? So I borrowed this from one of from the. I think it was one of the Ignite sessions. I think it was really good. So let's start with deployment. How can we deploy, and what should we think about? Well, prereqs. Basically, this shouldn't, we shouldn't have to say this. You should always install the latest updates, right? So then you don't need to make sure that you have installed the correct updates for uh, being able to install Edge Chromium. Um, if you haven't, there you will get an error message. And if you try to push the Enterprise Edition, you could get some uh, error message that's a bit different. Um, in uh, I've seen a couple of weird ones there. Uh, so you should try to do that as well. So make sure that you're up to date and then you won't have any issues at all. This is more an issue when testing when I see it. I, I, I throw on a 1903 image um, and then I try to uh, update to Edge Chromium and it fails. Uh, that's more the scenario for this one. But remember it anyway. Uh, there was a big scare before Edge Chromium was uh, released because the doc said that you need to deploy the blocker toolkit um, and you have to do this otherwise you will get it up and running and then a couple of days before it was released Microsoft changed the announcement to only up automatically update home and pro editions um, so that will be so so enterprise should be excluded still and that's a good thing as well as we want we want control right uh, you can read more about the exact plan here, how you, they plan to upgrade. One question I get as well is when will we see Edge Chromium as default browser in the next version of Windows 10? And the answer is we don't know. Uh, I guess Microsoft will uh, look at how the pickup rate is and the deployment rate is in the enterprises before they switch it to being default in the, in the media. So we will be stuck with... Um, the new modern Edge versus the new Edge browser for a while, uh, problematics. Deployment. To deploy, Microsoft put a lot of effort into deploying it. Uh, we can even do use the native deployment in Configuration Manager, the native deployment in Intune, or there's a standalone MSI that you can use for Enterprise. Um, which one should I choose? That's a very good question. Uh, there's a big difference between all of them. Uh, the biggest difference is that if you're on Configuration Manager, you have total control. You can say, I want to deploy um, uh, Edge Chromium um, version 81.555, if that's possible. I don't have to deploy the latest version. As of Intune, being evergreen, being um, always up to date, always updated, you always install the latest version. There's no version option. So that's a big difference as well. Um, is, this a, is this a useful difference? Uh, pff, hopefully not. As most of the updates are security rate related, you should definitely update as soon as possible as it's a browser. Um, we'll come back to the cadence of updates uh, going forward as well. So those are the biggest differences. The standalone MSI works just as fine as well. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go through this more in detail soon. Um, we can install all four versions of um, Edge Chromium in parallel. A stable dev beta and canary editions. Canary editions need to be installed manually. You can't install them either using Intune or Configuration Manager with the built-in wizards, of course. Of course, you can deploy it, right? Um, what they actually do is that you can control for every version as well how they're updated. Um, updating is a tough one um, because we're used to having control and we're used to Edge being updated when Microsoft wants it, right? So we get one update. Um, um, we get one update um, every month with the cumulative update, and that includes Edge. Now it's it's an open source project, so it's not really up to Microsoft when updates are delivered. They must deliver them and install them, so they can actually. Um, uh, so they can actually um, be secure, right? So they can't say, well, the project released two versions this week, but we'll wait until patch Tuesday. Then you are you are uh, vulnerable for that time. So that's not possible, right? So what it does, it deploys the edge updater. And that has a registry value. And here you can see which builds I have installed, basically. Um, dev build, uh, beta, uh, edge and of course the updater itself. And here we can control if this one should be updated automatically or if uh, what will happen, right? So we have group policies hitting the machine and there we can control exactly how we want it. So maybe we want uh, for the few users using the beat and dev, that's fine to automatically update for the from internet. For the ones using uh, the production version, maybe our network internally can't handle pushing 100 megabytes. It's around 100 megabytes, 85 or something like that, uh, like three times a week. Uh, so we need to use the configuration manager package for it as well and update it that way. That's also possible. Uh, when we apply the policies, we have policies here. So here we can set specific policies for specific branches, either for dev or beta or or stable version so we can we can differ how they're updated and there's a question on the admx files and i will come to that very soon uh, how that works um so that's how they're updated so we can control that in a different manner and we can have them all installed in a, at the same time and this is basically a big difference of how we handle edge before uh, but for developers and, and developer uh, applications, that's a big thing to have that in your process today. Hopefully they have it for Google Chrome today, as most likely they test it in their builds, which are quite similar as well. So that's a, a process change, but not definitely not a bad one, though. So we can have different versions installed. As as example, I think right now it's uh, the stable version is 81, the beta version is 83, and the the dev version is 84. So it's uh, it's a continuous race, right? And it, it's released. I haven't seen any official number from Microsoft, but I saw that uh, Chrome, it's the same engine, right? Chrome is uh, has major releases, releases every six weeks. So you can count on a new version every six weeks. Um, and basically that's keeping up as well what's happening. Uh, but it's good that we can have them deployed uh, in a, in parallel. Uh, if we deploy, there's a big difference though. If we deploy beta or dev, nothing will happen. It's just an app. If we deploy the stable version, it will do this basically on a Windows 10. It will switch all start menu pins, all shortcuts for previous versions of Edge. It will uh, place the replace it on the taskbar. It will change the shortcuts on the desktop. It will basically clean out everything, right? And every time you need, you try to launch the old version of Edge, it will open in a new version of Edge. Anyway, uh, there's a group policy saying that you can enable side-by-side -side support, so you can have them supported in the same time. There have been some initial issues with that feature, so you should really test it out before you decide to go that way. Um, but otherwise, the engine will replace it straight off. And that's a good thing, makes our life much easier, right? Um, if we want to deploy it without the desktop icon, I got that question so many times, so I created this slide, right? 
There's a new MSI property in Edge 81. I actually think it was introduced in the later versions of 80, but never mind. Um, do not create desktop shortcut equals true. There's another hack that Michael Niehaus has put up how to do it before, but this is much nicer, right? So then we don't get the desktop icon anymore. There's a lot of companies having policies again, putting desktop icons on the machines and so on. So that's a, that's a good thing. So you can remember that it works just fine. I will show you how to add that when you deploy it with configuration managers really soon as well. If we have a custom start menu layout, it will actually look like this after the upgrade. Um, and this is because uh, if anyone created a, a specific start menu with a shortcut point using the old edge, uh, that was a modern app, right? So we had, a, I can see if I have it here. Um, someone said they missed the released, missed the picture. I hope the sharing come back. Um, so let's see. Um, so this is what happens before, not the perfect uh, editor, right? But we have the tile where we can have service desk and we can have our own pointing to the modern app. So if we want to create a shortcut using Edge, Chromium or Edge, it, that's not a modern app anymore. So it needs to be redone. However, that's only a cosmetic thing because if I click the link now, it will still, it takes a couple of seconds, but it will open the correct browser instead of my uh, old browser, right? So it will open the, the, the correct um, uh, version of Edge anyway. So it's, it's more a cosmetic issue. Uh, maybe you should think about fixing it in the future, but still, it still works at least. Um, so let's switch back. There was someone having problems seeing the demo, but I hope it worked. So that's something you need to take into account as well. If you deploy custom start menu layouts and you use the edge icon today and you want it to look as pretty, you need to fix it. File association, same way. Uh, it will try to take control of that and fix it, but you, if you push it out, then you need to fix it as well. Otherwise, you will see the file association was reset, blah, 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 on the machine, and that's bad. Uh, so they, this is actually what you need to change, at least, depending on what you changed before, of course. And it's actually the official docs now as well. So check that out and keep that in mind as well. Uh, if we deploy it with Configuration Manager, uh, we can do it with beta dev stable. It will download the content. And it will create two deployment types for us. No uninstall commando. And it will install by using a PowerShell script. And the reason for using a PowerShell script, it's, it's that you can select if it should do automatic updates or not in, in MEM 2002. In Me Configuration Manager 19.10, it will always disable automatic updates. So that's extremely important so that you don't deploy it there and think that it will update automatically and you will have a browser that's vulnerable, right? Uh, it requires internet connections to the normal CDN, but it also requires internet connection to this one because this is actually the page it uses to, <laughs> this is very small, to get which, which versions are uh, available to download. Uh, so the versions in here will match the versions I have if I do like this. And go in here and say I want to create a new version of uh, Edge like this. And I want a new content. And we do like this. So the versions that are shown here is coming from that API, right? So that's why it's a long list. So as you can see here, I can deploy all the versions that has been available or the latest one. And I can now control if Edge is to automatically update um, or not on the client. You can't do that in 1910. You won't have any icon either. That's just in 2002. Um, so that's an important change as well. And we also have this nice new dashboard in 2002, which information on which browsers are installed and which browsers are the default browser on the machines as well. So apparently in my test environment, Internet Explorer is very popular. 
Um, so, um, <laughs> which is, I will, I will fix that. Uh, and we can also see which versions of Edge are out there on the machines as well. Uh, so that's actually quite nice. So we get a nice view. And for updates as well, if we want to use Configuration Manager for updating, I'm not saying that either one is right or bad because it depends on your prerequisites and your um, your um, your environment, what you need. But you have it here and you can create an e AEDR as, as always. You need to select the product though, so it actually syncs down the updates, but it works perfectly fine as well. Uh, so that's up to you to choose your update strategy in total though. If we look at the package created on the machine where we when we download it, it actually looks like uh, this coming down. Uh, let's see, I did this yesterday like this nice. Uh, so it to actually give you the version and from there you have both platforms. And then we have the PowerShell script and MSI file. So it's about 85 or 82 megabytes. Um, if I take edit on that one, we can see that it writes the policy in the registry for edge update. Uh, so it will actually turn off or on automatic update depending on what you choose in the, in the deployment. If you're on 2002, if you're 1910, it will always turn off automatic updates. Um, so that's 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 great. Uh, we can in here we can also check the set our extra variable if you like. So if we wanted to skip creation of the desktop icon, we can do it here as well. Uh, and the script is, um, or we can do it as a variable. We can do it in many ways. Um, the script is remote signed, and that's a problem as well if we change it, of course, and. If we, depending on which, uh, which restrictions we have, we maybe need to add execution policy bypass to the command line to be able to install it, right? Otherwise, we need to have remote signed or unrestricted. If you have all signed, then it won't work. So that's how we, that's something we need to change as well when deploying it. Um, otherwise, it will look like this. So if you deploy it and you get error code one, you most likely have the wrong um, um, execution policy set when using the script. Uh, and you can see that in the log files if you check it. If we deploy it to Intune, it, it's a totally different ball game. It will always install the latest one. And, and when I looked at it, I haven't checked it if it's still the same in 81, but what I checked before is that it actually deploys the Edge updater instead, writes the register key and says which version of Edge it should install. So it will always be the latest one. Uh, so it will, that's that's actually a really cool solution as well. And and again, there's no need, right? You're in tune, you're modern managed, you're always up to date. That's how, where you, that's the place you want to be. Updates then. So feature updates or major releases will be released on a six week six week cycle at least approximately that's the same as google maybe you saw that there will be some changes in this area as well due to the covid19 uh, um, uh, pandemic we have around the world uh, security and compatibility updates will be shipped as needed we can use automatic updates we can let WVSUS do it, we can let Configuration Manager do it. So you can patch it however you like. So it will suit in all your um, enterprise needs as well. Um, so it should be possible to figure every, every scenario out using these three or four options we have. If you look at Configuration and Group Policies, these are separate ADMX files, so for every version of Edge Chromium, we need to update our ADMX files. And yes, that's correct. You need to update them every six weeks then, uh, potentially. Um, I guess that will be more stable going forward, but right now that's definitely the case. I will come to that as well. So it's separate settings for Edge and Edge Chromium. So uh, yes, you need, I uh, was a question before, yes, you need um, uh, you need updates, you, you need to update the ADMX files, and yes, they won't, they will not 
conflict with configuring the modern edge browser. So it's totally different settings, so you can have them totally separated. There's a separate one for edge updater and a separate one for what's mandatory and what's recommended as well. So we can have recommended settings and we can have mandatory settings. Remember that some mandatory settings still override the default settings. So if you start mixing those, you need to do some more testing than, than, than I normally do and or I've done with this one. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. Profiles, we can have profiles in, uh, in, um, in uh, as well as we can actually in uh, Edge Chrome. So we can have profiles and that's a great thing, especially if you work with multiple tenants as Mirko did before, we can have more profiles in here. We can sign in to sync our settings as well. That right now there's missing a way to force this silently in a good way. That's also a question I get. Um, and I can create uh, new profiles and whatever I like. So I can just say I want new profile if I like, add profile, browsers, guests. So I can have different profile for different tenants, for example, with different cookies and have a great, great experience for us admins switching between profiles, if we like that. Uh, we can control how profiles, and if I say sign in here in the sync, as I was asked for here, that's that's how we can sync settings as well. Um, so the options we have to sync settings today is either by using a Microsoft account or Azure AD Premium. It requires AADP1 license in your tenant, um, and all the data is encrypted uh, using Azure uh, Information Protection, just as we do with the uh, enterprise state roaming features in Azure AD Premium. So they are very securely stored, uh, but we can right now, there's no way of storing your profile locally. In, in, um, when you're using Google Chrome, there's a, there's a poli policy to turn on where you can have a roaming, roaming profile, basically, where you roam all your bookmarks uh, or everything to a simple PB file. .pb, uh, which you then can roam using UEV or um, put it in OneDrive or wherever you like to put it. That's not possible, at least not now for, for Edge Chromium. Let's hope it comes. If you go through the group policies, you will actually see a reference to that. If you enable the, uh, the profile sync file, then this, settings will, this setting will be overridden, but that's, it's not implemented, so that doesn't really help. The way we can control if we don't want to use Microsoft accounts or allow that, that's a question I get as well. We can do that by saying that it's only a specific tenant name or DNS name that can sync settings. So I can sync my settings as a consultant either, for example. Um, let's hope that that will be a bit more granular as well in the future and maybe it's okay to sync to an MS account. That's up to you and your business and your requirements. That's not uh, something that we want to discuss here. That will take too long. Uh, and if there's a question on what's new, uh, these are the set compared to 79. These are the new settings in version 80, and this is the these are the new settings in version 81. So yes, there will be differences for every version. So yes, you should have in your process to update the ADMX files as well. Um, as there will be new settings to potentially configure depending if you want it on or off or how, how. and of course the security posture you have as a company as well. Um, there's a good one here in 80 called hide first run experience would actually hide the first wizard that starts you up as well. Security baselines. Uh, Microsoft publishes security baselines both for group policies and for Intune. Uh, look at them, it's very good advice. In version 80, there's around 270 enforceable group policies for computer policies. And the ones that was introduced in version 80 is the new setting called put, uh, Configure Microsoft Defender Smart Screen to block unwanted apps as well. Um, so it was introduced in Windows Defender and now it's in Google Chrome. So that's a good idea as well. 
So read, uh, read them and follow them. For version 81, there's no difference for the security baseline from 80 to 81. That's exactly the same. And if we look at the Intune security baseline, basically it's exactly the same setting. Two things sticks out here, uh, and that's the two recommendations. Uh, one that is that you turn off the password manager in Chrome, Hedge Chromium, sorry. Exactly the same thing you should do in Chrome, actually, because it's it's um, it doesn't save the passwords or usernames in a very secure manner. Uh, so um, there's uh, tools out there, and you can grab every phone in clear text with a single command line, basically. Uh, um, so and the same is for um, if we go to extensions as well. The default settings in the security baseline is to block all extensions. And the reason for blocking all extensions, that's because extensions are evil, right? And will steal your information. Well, not all of them, but of course, everyone in this world isn't uh, a good citizen. Um, so um, if we take this example, which is it's actually almost two years ago, uh, there is more. Um, this is a good example, right? When you, when you add... Uh, um, an extension like I did here with like say um, yeah that's a bad example um, if you add a uh, exam uh, extension it you actually grant that extension re rights to both read and and potentially change all your settings that you uh, on web pages you browse against so if you install Chrome and you don't manage this today or Chromium and you browse to an internal web page, you will potentially still send all that information externally. Uh, are all bad blockers malicious? No. Uh, the problem is only how do you know that? You don't have any agreement with them. You don't have anything but their statement on their web page. So this is an example where a bogus ad blocker, which was put in the Edge Chromium or Google Chrome store, which is actually the same extensions. They actually got 20 million people to install them and they actually stole all the personal information and then made a, a huge botnet of them afterwards. Uh, so this actually happens as well. So you should in your environment actually follow the security baselines and look at them. There are more security configurations you can do of course, but it's a good minimum. And password managers and extensions are the biggest, biggest thieves in there as I can I tell as well. Uh, so check those out as well. You can of course whitelist extensions if you like as well. IE mode is something I really like as well. This is the killer feature if you still have I applications requiring I11 that will make your users want to use this one instead. Basically it's totally integrative native experience in Internet Explorer and in, in uh, Edge Chromium. So we don't have to have Internet Explorer switching of Windows anymore. Uh, basically it looks like this. I'm running out of time so I won't show it live. What I've done now, I put uh, this silver light. I think this is a good example as well. Because if you take up Edge Chromium or Edge and try to go to this web page, page on how Silverlight and IS media services can give you smooth streaming, you will only get the text box saying install Silverlight. Uh, but if you use, uh, if you have installed Silverlight and you use this, this is what you get. It works in the same window, in the same tab. You will only get an Internet Explorer win, uh, icon here as well. And that's a great, great, great end user experience. So I think that will hopefully give you a better end user experience and your users. You need to turn this off on, however, manually because it's default off and you must test it. So basically you control it with the setting called Configure Internet Explorer Integration. It's, it's If you set it to enable, you can set either point to jump to I11 or use the Explorer mode. There's been some problems with um, people using ADFS for authentication, for example. They must be um, added like as neutral sites so that they don't uh, redirect basically. So So if you, if you open that page in the, otherwise you will jump back and forth, right? So we'll jump into IE mode, out of IE mode, into IE mode, out of IE mode, and then it doesn't work. So you need to flag them so, so that they're not redirected to 
to either one. So if it's open I11, then it stays there. If it's open in, in Edge Chromium, then it stays there. Otherwise, you will jump back and forth, right? So, so check that out as well. And this was actually updated as well in February. I think it was, or it was March. Uh, so if you haven't updated your uh, IE site list manager, you should do that as well. Uh, there's a docs in there as well. So if you upgrade it and click configure IE mode, then it's there basically. Uh, so frequently asked questions for myself then. Um, <laughs> this is questions I asked, or I responded to on Reddit and stuff like that. So basically roaming settings on premise, it's a no right now. Can we uninstall IE11 when we use the IE mode? No, you can't. It's one of the prereqs for IE mode in Edge Chromium to work still. So we still need i11 to be installed. It uses the Trident HTLM um, uh, engine to render the web pages, and that's installed with i11. Um, and does all the Edge Chromium group policy settings apply to Edge as well? And I responded to that as well, and it's no. So that was my 32 minutes of uh, making the transition to Edge Chromium, and I will stop now because I'm over time already. And I will stop the recording and ask any questions while we've set up Maury, Maurice to present. Thank you. <laughs>